I'm here with the lovely Erin Skillen, and we just had like an entire conversation. It was a great conversation. It was really quite epic, There's actually. There's two people here that might have heard what we And said. the internet kicked us off, so yeah. you guys totally missed it, but that's okay. These things happen. And we're doing a series of conversations with um, some really awesome local people who are also doing a lot of rethinking thinking mm-hmm. um, and also exploring what matters. And that's our tagline at Rethink Thinking. And, uh, and certainly something we live by is to explore what matters and to continually explore what matters. So I'm here with the lovely Erin Skillen, who is the Hi. COO of... I'm the coup. She's the coup. Yeah. She's the coup. I like that. I like that. Um, she's the coup of, uh, of uh, Family Sparks. Um, and uh, I'm going to... I'm going to let you tell us a little bit about Family Sparks because, you know, now that we're actually alive, yeah. I think, you know, you get to take two, right? I do. So I you get, get to say it again You get better. to say it again I and like you get that. to do it I better. Like the power of that. Um, so tell us a little bit about Family Sparks. Yeah, so Family Sparks is uh, an online parenting resource. We also do live events and um, workshops, but based on uh, helping you navigate the crazy world of parenting in the 21st century because it has changed drastically from like our parents' generation. It's a whole new world with technology. Um, online bullying, uh, pornography on your phone, all this crazy stuff that's going on. And we want to be able to um, help parents know a bit better about what to do and how to raise really resilient kids. We're really focused mm-hmm. on resiliency and, and helping to, to raise kids who, because we know it's going to be hard. Yeah, We know it's going to be tough. Climate change, hello. Um, all of these hard things that are coming, but we don't know exactly what form it's going to take. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to help parents raise resilient kids who can um, face the challenges and when they do get knocked down, they bounce up faster. That is such a fabulous cause, and I know you guys are predominantly working with um, families. Certainly, our audience um, with Rethink Thinking is is a slightly older um, teenage audience, mm-hmm. um, grade nine to twelve students. And I love that you guys are really working with families, um, especially in those earlier stages, mm-hmm. uh, because so many of the things that our teenagers are now struggling with mm-hmm. uh, are are related to these conversations and this this open space amongst families and in their communities and in schools that aren't necessarily. Um, getting the attention they might they might need so Mm -hmm. I certainly talk to a lot of uh, young people Mm -hmm. who are really struggling um, with all kinds of issues around uh, and I know this is a big topic for you guys sex and sexuality Mm -hmm. um, and uh, gender uh, related issues and um, and certainly equality amongst all of those um, differences yeah. and uh, and certainly something that comes up a lot in it came up last year at, at uh, Summit at the Pier I know it will come up again this year in November at uh, at Summit at the Bay um, that a lot of the projects and ideas that they develop are um, around these really really big topics mm-hmm. and they're topics that aren't necessarily getting explored at home and I don't think it's because parents you know, don't care or don't want to have yeah. those conversations. It's that it can't just be the parent's job. Yes. And as a community, those are conversations we all need to be having. And certainly teachers and, and, and schools play a big role in that. Um, but I'm, I'm really curious uh, how Family Sparks sort of fits into that because I know that you're, you're you know, really creating a lot of content for parents mm-hmm. um, to be able to um, sort of understand where they stand on those yeah. issues and be able to communicate with their kids. So tell me a little bit about the, especially the, the sexuality yeah. um, workshops and yes. training. So for instance, right now we're working on, we'll be releasing courses um, on sexuality for ages three to nine, nine to 12, and 13 to 17. So looking at sort of each of the big phases Mm -hmm. um, and how parents can be the go-to person to talk to about those subjects, which is not, I think, any teenager, if you said, like, who's the first person you talk to about sex? I don't know if mom or dad would be their first answer. But that's what we're trying to help embrace the idea that you can have these conversations here's how because it's the how that's hard how do I start a conversation and so what we're trying to do is provide ways that parents can be open-minded um, be able to initiate conversations and support conversations with their child and do their best when a child does come with a pretty cracked question yeah. to handle And they that never properly. come at a convenient time. <laughs> no. It's never like you're just sitting reading a magazine. No, no. <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like I'm. you're never prepared for the question. No. So learning how to have sort of like a, a general response of thank you for asking me that rather mm-hmm. than, oh my God, what is wrong with you? Yeah. Don't Where say did you that. get that Yeah, from? that's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. No. Thank you for asking me. I need a moment to think about that. And then go in the bathroom and be like, oh my God. (laughs) What have I done? (laughs) So um, so (laughs) what we're doing is just trying to facilitate that idea that you you should be the go-to person. You should be um, your, your child's 
trusted resource that they know that even if you don't have the answer, they can still have a conversation with you about it and, and embrace that curiosity. You're talking about, you know, in being inquisitive. Yeah. So embrace curiosity together. And I'm not saying you'll sit and read a sex book together, but at least you'll, you'll help enable their process of learning as opposed to making it a shameful uh, taboo subject that they can't discuss with you and thus who are they discussing it with mm -hmm. um, so for instance like one of the cool things I learned and I've used this myself my kids are just four and six but I've used this technique and I think it works with teenagers probably even better um, talking in the car yeah. so you're not staring you're not doing this you're yeah. staring straight ahead you're yeah. it's not you like don't have a, to make eye contact with nope, uncomfortable subjects. lots of other things to look at lots of places you can go <laughs> but you're there and you're in an environment a contained private environment and so mm -hmm. you can start these conversations in the car and rather than sitting at the kitchen table like staring at, staring at one another like how's what do you know about sex honey you know <laughs> so well and it's it's how it starts too right yes. it's like if it feels mm -hmm. like um, some sort of fabricated environment and, yes. and you're like, you know, sort of setting up this conversation, it yep. never happens no. comfortably that way. No, you no, know? it's awkward. It's just awkward for everyone. So finding those sort of natural moments to, to invite questioning and it's fantastic and I love it. So I'm seeing this with my own kids. We have, we've had some pretty open conversations about, you know, where babies come from and how that works. So they're understanding the birds and bees, but then the next questions come when you're least expecting it and it's like, it's terrifying and hilarious all at once, okay. but uh, with Family Sparks, I think the thing that we're working on is really just getting parents to embrace that it's not perfect. You're not going to be a perfect parent, but there are just ways that you can be a more open parent and a better parent, yeah. And but then encouraging your child to um, model what they see in you and be able to feel trusted and be able to feel that they can go out in the world and they're empowered and they can take risks, but when mm -hmm. something hits the fan, they can come back and know that they've got a caring person that's going to be there yeah. to lift them back up. And I think I totally agree with that. And I think we, t you know, we talked a little bit earlier mm -hmm. about this as well, um, about the idea that, you know, I, I certainly as a parent want to be that person that my child picks up the phone when they're in trouble or yes. when they, you know, have made a bad, a bad call. Yep. We're all going to make those bad calls every time and time and time again, that's going to happen, especially yep. with adolescence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and certainly, you know, I, I still make bad calls all the time. Yeah, I still do, but I don't call anyone about it generally. <laughs> <laughs> now I can get yeah. myself figured out. Sweep it under the rug. Don't yeah, tell anybody. <laughs> but when they make a big mistake, when they're in an unsafe situation, they put themselves in an unsafe situation. You don't want them to feel isolated and alone. You want them to mm -hmm. know that they will pick up the phone. Yeah. Hi, I've done this. Help, come get me. Yeah. And they know they're not just going to get brutally punished. punished, but that it'll be a conversation and you'll figure out how to prevent it next time. But that, that freedom, again, to take some risk, but not get stuck in a really, really unpleasant or horrible situation. Yeah, Dodge some really. of the stuff that maybe some of us had to deal with when we were younger. Certainly, right? right? Like not feeling safe to, to um, I was very fortunate that I certainly felt that level of safety with my parents. And I think that was one of the biggest things I took from them mm -hmm. was that, you know, knowing that that was an option, like that, yeah. that somebody would help me yes. <laughs> and that, and not judge me yeah. and uh, and support me through something if I if I did make a bad call, um, but I certainly experienced that with a lot of young people that um, they don't have a lot of that in their lives and so when they make bad choices they continue making bad choices trying to deal with that mm -hmm. bad choice mm -hmm. because they don't have a safe place to go and, exactly and sort of share that and work through it and, yeah. and figure out better choices. Yeah, and forward. I mean, and what I love about the idea of embracing um, curiosity, like you guys are encouraging uh, kids to do, is that it rarely is black and white. There's a lot of gray and a lot of variations and every every little thing you change redefines the situation so to tell kids this is right and this is wrong that generally doesn't work yeah. so it, embracing a conversation between the two of you and being open to that and being able to understand maybe some nuance and and see that every situation is a little bit different rather than just like trying to preach right and wrong these are the rules yeah it doesn't work it doesn't work, it doesn't and, work. and and I think that's probably the biggest thing that you brought up that I certainly recognize working with with young people is that they are so uh, used to this kind of um, black and white world that adults lay out for them yeah. and their generation is so open to new mm -hmm. ideas new ways of thinking yeah um, and they really are I mean our our, our, our our business is called rethink thinking yes. our, our organization yeah. is called that because it really is consistently about rethinking how we look at the world yeah. how our kids look at the world you know this next generation of, of young people yeah. you know has some pretty big 
stuff to tackle. Yes, yeah, um, we've left them a, a, a mess, like yeah. a big fat mess. And yes. so the least we can do is be there for them and give them some good support as they, you know, grow up and navigate their way through this this complete storm of chaos that we've made. It, totally, and I think this is really another thing that, that um, is a clear example of, of what Family Sparks does and certainly what Rethink Thinking does. Um, is that collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you going out to try and solve this for parents on your own, you know, yep. or Jillian going out to do that on yep. her own, us trying to do something independently yep. um, without really um, you know, coming together and bringing different ideas to the table mm -hmm. and looking at, and I think that those collaboration, creativity, curiosity, inquiry, yeah. those skills are so, so, so important for mm -hmm. our kids to be able to really look at the big problems in the world yeah. and and look at different ways to tackle them and look at ways to come together because yeah. no one person is going to solve the big, no, big issues no. we've got. You'll never be able to accomplish everything on your own. You just can't. It, you, need a, you need a team. You need a network. And we all need to be working from each other because, gosh, who wants to sit around reinventing the wheel? If you've already <laughs> invented the wheel, let's share your wheel and let's see what we can do with it. Like It just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So that's definitely one of our ideas is we try to instill when we're talking to, especially preteens, um, when things start to get too, like, peer pressure, like, well, well, she would do this, why don't you do this? Mm -hmm. um, that idea that, no, you are not competitors. You you and your female classmates, you're not competitors. You're collaborators, you are you have camaraderie, you're together. You don't let someone pit this person against you because I know that's something that I grew up with, that women were seen, females were seen in competition, and so let's break that down. There's no time for that. Let's just collaborate and see what we can do together. Like, yeah. Let's, the scarcity mindset? No. No thanks. Yeah. No. no that, we got no time for that. And they got, no. <laughs> our world has no time for no, that. No, we don't. We it really don't. Work. No. Um, and speaking of which, we are actually sitting right now at Club Quench, yes. which is speaking of collaborative spaces. Look at this wall. Who doesn't love this wall? <laughs> it's amazing. Um, however, Coralie McLean is not here, and I, no. you know, she's a part of the furniture, and mm -hmm. um, so if she's out there watching, I think she should be down here as a part of our furniture. But I think so. You know, right here, maybe. Right. Yes. She looks so lovely as part of the furniture. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I want to speak to that too because I think um, these kinds of collaborative spaces, mm -hmm. um, like Club Quench, and and we certainly see those popping up, yes. you know, in Victoria and in other places. Um, in terms of the idea of, of placemaking, mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, a space like this, you know, where you and I can come in and we yep. can have a chat and we can, yep. you know, do a Facebook Live um, and talk to some interesting people and, you know, these kinds of spaces, mm -hmm. I think, are such a, the, the coming together of people to be totally. able to share these kinds of ideas and to be able to work together to come up with solutions. It's certainly what we do at the summit, mm -hmm. bringing hundreds of kids together. Um, and I'm seeing more and more and more um, in the way of opportunities mm -hmm. to um, uh, place make, yeah. certainly, um, and create um, really, uh, really amazing collaborative um, environments yes. that are conducive yeah. to this kind of um, uh, working together. Because mm -hmm. I don't think that uh, when you go into, you know, whether it's cubicles or classrooms. A locked or, door. <laughs> yeah. Behind locked doors. Behind yeah. locked doors, yeah. right? And so yeah. there's so much um, good that comes from these collaborative well, spaces. That's how I, so I'm not fully tra transitioned from film and TV into tech. I'm sort of I, I levitate between the two, but it was a co-working space that got me going in this whole industry. And, and if you if you trace it back enough, it led me to Family Sparks, and it was a collaborative space for tech. There's a plug for co-working. Yeah, huh, there friends? was. It was. It was. I <laughs> wanted to get into the tech sector. I wanted to know more about it, so I got a desk at a co-working space, and I started to meet the people around me, learn what they were doing, and some of them are, are really good friends of mine now, and they all helped. Like, oh, great. So you're doing this, and I know someone who's doing that, and then they become ambassadors for what you're doing and vice versa. And so it's like having a team of people out in the world supporting your ideas and sharing your ideas as opposed to just you in that little isolated silo going, why doesn't anyone I care? I think that's where I first met you, too. Yes, and it was, so, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, speaking yeah. of which, yeah. talk about diversity of skills, this lady here. Uh, <laughs> so that was your, your gaming company. My gaming my gaming attempt company, yes. Well, well yeah. and what a great... So th this is actually a fantastic story, and I know Family Sparks is totally related to um, uh, what we do in terms of yes. uh, parents and families and, and young people. Um, but you have a really phenomenal story. And I love, uh, and I'll, I'll let you speak to this. I won't ramble on about it. But one of the things I loved was how openly you shared um, <laughs> about I, your I successes, your failures, <laughs> your everything in between. I yeah. Honestly, I loved it. I shared it with multiple different people. Yeah. Like it, your openness and honesty around everything that you experienced with that was so 
um, so great to be sharing in the way that you did. And um, I certainly, this is why at, at the summit we bring, uh, we bring in a human library, mm -hmm. we bring in adult facilitators, but the, I mean, the kids run the show, like yeah. everything is them and we're there really to share our experiences. Yeah. And so I think you did that so beautifully and eloquently and I'd love you to share just a little bit about that experience with you. Thank with you. you. <laughs> Speaking of inquiry, yeah, right? Yeah, but that was yeah. an intense, that was an intense experience. So essentially, uh, just short, short story. I was in um, documentary television for 10 years. I loved it, but it, the, the, the industry changed. It was all about reality TV, and I wasn't willing to make shows that exploited people all the time. And the stuff that I wanted to do wasn't getting funded. So I thought, hmm, well, what, what do I need to be doing differently? And then as things went on, I got really in, entranced by the idea of um, gamified learning and being able to help kids explore things through video games because they're doing it anyway so why don't we make something cool so what I was working on was a game with a team I had a great team of people that um, came together and we were working on a video game trying to teach kids about social entrepreneurship so the idea that you could take um, doing good and you could take profit and smash them together and make it into something and it was a company where kids can make their own socially conscious skateboard company and for a series of different reasons, we almost had a contract. We had, <laughs> I was telling this story on an F Up panel last week. I love that, the F Up panel. <laughs> that was my first one and I loved it. I'm like, Isn't it fun? I am like, talk hooked. about all your failures. I'm so hooked now. It's like, <laughs> but we were talking about vulnerability and being open and not, and just really being, um, transparent and not just pretending everything's okay. So we had a, a contract, we were going to signing, it was a big deal, it was gonna take our game across the world. That. Yeah, yeah. It and big. it fell through, and it fell through, and I, I I got a bag of chips and some dip, and I sat on the couch, <laughs> and I watched Nashville on Nashville. Netflix. I know, like, classic. turn your brain off, just turn it right That's off. a classic chick moment, I guess. <laughs> it was such a chick moment. <laughs> and I just rotted on the couch for like 24 hours, and I was still married at the time, and my husband came upstairs to see he worked downstairs. He's like, this, I tried that. I was in an accelerator. I tried different funding sources. And what um, I've distilled this down with a friend of mine. We've come up, this is what this is what happened. The market said, no, thank you. Yeah. And it said it again, and it said it again. And finally, a voice in my head said, yeah, you need to hear that. Yeah. It's saying no, thank you. It's not saying that you suck. Yeah. It's saying your idea is not working for you. Do something else. Right now. Yeah. Sometimes it's timing. Some, you know, it's it was so we're back. I think Yay. we're back. Yay. We lost a couple people. But we're back. <laughs> we're back. Okay, I'm going to be very clear that the internet issue is not Club Quench. Yep. It was my phone trying to bounce into Shaw. So we love you, Shaw, but somehow it's just not, not a great connection. Quench so connection is awesome. Quench connection is awesome yeah. and <laughs> rocking everyone. So just so you know. <laughs> That's what we get for connecting elsewhere. How dare exactly. we? How Google. dare we? Yeah. How dare we? Where were we? Uh, so I was just talking about basically um, the market spoke and said no thanks. So I had to make a decision. Do I keep beating this poor dead horse that's basically decapitated and quartered in my basement. <laughs> do I keep at it or do I let it go? Because I had other opportunities knocking on my door and I, I finally, I just said, I'm doing it. I'm pulling the plug. It's, it's dead. It's over. Yeah. And people, there are those who say, you know, oh, but you never give up. You never give up. I'm yeah. like, I don't think I'm giving up. No, I'm not giving You're up. I'm not. On. Yeah, I'm moving on, and that's yeah. the thing. And when I and I love doing the track. You did back. not give up, girl. No, <laughs> I did. <laughs> you did not I'm give tenacious. Up. I'm like the pit. Twenty four hours just... of eating chips and watching Nashville is not giving up. <laughs> I have my down day, and then you boom, you bounce back up. That's yeah. the resiliency thing, right? But yeah. it was, um, it was that video game thing that got me on the radar of this, this, these people who now brought me into Family Sparks. So if you do the track back, I call it, and you sit and you look at what you're doing that you love and what's working well and you track it back, or I guess you could look at what's not working well. That too. But track it back to how it happened. And sometimes it's really fascinating because you could call it a failure, but I don't call it a failure. I call it like, it's like there was, I was running and mm -hmm. then there's this thing here and this was the springboard and yeah, it didn't like, I didn't stay on it very long and it didn't really work out, but I yeah. launched me over into some new territory that I never, if I had just stayed safe and hadn't taken that leap, never would have happened, never would have happened. Have so. you ever read that, um, uh, there's a Brene Brown quote about being face down in the arena? I'm obsessed with her. Okay, well, who she's is like it, right? my, she's, she's just like my imaginary bestie. She's, yeah. well, we should track her down. Totally, she's totally my that. imaginary bestie. But too. yeah, face down, right? right? It's but what being, you do when you lift your head up, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get out there and you put yourself out there, and that's the thing, I think, 
um, we were talking on the panel I was on last week about Canadians being more risk adverse and being more careful and mm -hmm. and I think yeah that does happen and I, I always I don't support making like there's just bad choices but then there's risks and there can be a difference and taking a calculated risk can be a really powerful thing and I'm really glad that I did it yeah um, so yeah well, and, and shutting it down was yeah. as much of a risk as yeah. taking the risk in the first place yeah. it's like okay is it time mm -hmm. how do you know when it's time yeah you know all of those all those questions and that you are, my, are people gonna think I'm a screw up and then yeah. I was part of this accelerator. I thought, well, that's it for that. But no, they've accepted me to continuing oh, yeah. on because they were behind the entrepreneur, not the business. Right. So that is, that's exciting too. So that's the thing when I'm talking to, um, I was talking to this girl last week, a teenager, and she was saying, well, I don't know if I should. I have this idea, but I don't I'm like, when, when not? Yeah. When, if not now, when? Because yeah. you're, you're young. I said, do you have kids? She says, no. Do you have a mortgage? So do you have a mortgage? <laughs> I said that. Yeah. Do you have a mortgage? Do you have like anything that's tying you down? She's like, no. I said, Girl, this yeah, is the time. This is the time. Run with it now and is the time. don't look back because you will, you know, there will be a time someday and mm -hmm. I still get to do, I'm sure you still get to do things you love, but it's different when you have responsibilities to other people other Absolutely. than yourself. It's really different. It's very different. So I like, you know, run when you can, run at any time, but the more you can do it before you get sort of those other people that need you to, yeah. you know, be responsible and those small feed people. them. You those troublesome small people. Those small people. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are great. I get to test stuff on them all the time for work, so I love it. Yeah, that's perfect, right? Yeah, it's you're, really great. You're like living in the field. Constant so. market research yeah. all the time. I feel yeah. the same way. You know, I live with a teenager and, yeah. and everything I do is for teenagers. Yeah. So, but it's, it's really, um, you know, you brought up that really, really valid point that, you know, that it really, there is no better time, mm -mm. and that is certainly what we try to instill for young people yeah. is that, you know, now that you're living with your parents, they're paying your bills, yep. they're, they're buying your groceries, mm -hmm. you know, so start exploring those things that matter to yep. you. Start looking at what you can do, how you can make change, things that you are passionate about, and mm -hmm. you have all the space in the world to fall on your face, yes. you know? Yeah. Like, just do it. Just keep falling on your face. And pursuing that passion, because yeah. that's the thing, like, um, so many things that were really hard, you get through, and that's personally or professionally, you get through because of your passion. I'm passionate about this thing, so I will do what it takes to get there. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know what your passion is, I knew mine really young. Did you? Yeah, I did. I, and I, you know what's interesting is mine has really evolved yeah. over time. Yeah. But it's always, the core of it has always been the same. Mm -hmm. And it's really just, it's always been about people. People yeah. are my passion. Exactly. Yeah. And so you have your thing, and but some people don't have it. So mm -hmm. so don't just like sit and bemoan the fact you don't have it. Go out and try different things. Like mix yeah. it up and see what's out there because there's so many different, we have so much freedom now with, oh, you can get an education in anything online right now. Like yeah. it's incredible. It's the, amazing. The knowledge that we can get versus yeah. when I was in university, it's astounding. So take advantage advantage and get out there and I love this is so I'm in the magic school bus period of life right with my kids <laughs> I love so the that school you know Miss Frizzle like make mistakes get messy like it's great it's a great <laughs> rule the greatest I, show is that still on they made a new one. Oh wow yeah, there's a new a whole it's new not like actual it. people it's still cartoon it's still cartoon it's the oh, same man. song I love Miss Frizzle differently and now it's Miss Frizzle's sister and she's she's awesome it's awesome <laughs> I'm a big fan and I like it because I can watch it with my kids and I actually get something out of it and they're learning yeah. something and it's fun but the idea like yeah and the, the other thing I love about Miss the Miss Frizzle, um, the new one, I don't know if the old one's policy was the same, but when 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 stuff went really wrong, she never freaked out. She never freaked she out. She was chill. She's like, that's oh, okay. About this this is a new challenge. So We're gonna push through. We're gonna fix this. So yeah. when it's happening, my son likes to freak out, and I am a freak outer. And so I'll say, look, what Miss Frizzle did? She get upset when they like crashed on the moon or whatever? And he's like, no, no, she figured it out. I was like, yes, she did. So <laughs> you just stay chill, yeah. figure it out. Nothing got ever got fixed by freaking out. So that's yeah, awesome. That's, I love it. I yeah. love lessons. lessons from the magic school bus. yeah you never know what they got tucked in there yeah, yeah. totally well and and before yeah before we before we jump off because you know I mean I'm sure everyone out there wants to listen to us all day but um I, I want to just talk all day I know right <laughs> we're good at this yeah, we'll we should just, just like have our yeah. own show we're, we're gonna take the show on the road um I think one of the things that um I certainly I see synergy in in the work that you're doing and the work that we're doing mm -hmm. and I mean you know we live in this amazing city where it's like it's so big and so small all yes. at the same time yes and um, and and collaboration is something that you know we've we've touched on a little bit, mm -hmm. um, and certainly you know as it relates to the fabulous co-working space that we're that we're now in um, in terms of space. But collaboration happens, mm -hmm. you know, online. It happens in person. Yep. Um, and I know that you're a, a lot of the the um, programming that you guys do is is online yes. as as well as you have some in-person events and mm -hmm. and so that's just an interesting topic that we talk a lot about in wanting to support you know more people in bigger ways um, and certainly online is the way to do that yeah. Um, but the need and demand that there is and certainly I see this um, you know with our demographic of grade 9 to 12 students that 
when we put them in a room together mm-hmm. or a space together for, you know, two days and, yeah. and nonstop back to back, the kind of magic that happens mm-hmm. is, um, it's really like nothing else, oh, right? Really, it, it, it's like a drug in the air. Like it, it a is. A natural drug is just so, and you can never replicate that. I, I, I challenge someone to replicate that yeah. digitally. But it's, it's, it's so powerful, and that's one of the things we embrace is the idea of nurturing relationships, real-life relationships. So um, I think that that person-to-person contact is so, so, so important. And so I'm curious, like, that is something that, you know, we certainly struggle with is, the, is all the sort of moving parts and pieces of mm-hmm. how do we make sure to reach as many people as possible with this, like, really valuable information and learning. Um, but also have the, you know those in-person events, and so yeah. you know we and a, as you know, um, an in-person event. You know, we're putting together this event for yeah. 500 youth in two weeks from now, big and job. it's big, yeah. right? And it's so, and it's like ultimately, you know, it's not it's not a thing about making money that piece yeah. of it, right? And yeah. it's like balancing, you know, uh, the online portion of the business mm-hmm. and the in-person that's so valuable. Do you guys toss that idea around a lot at Family Yeah, Sparks? we've we've talked about like. Um, going down one path or the other and anytime we considered that we said no we have to go sort of both in tandem and yeah. this one will get a little more gas and then this one will get a little more gas but generally they're going along at the same sort of growth pattern right because we really value both sides of that but what we're also doing is looking at ways of um, building in a, what's that book the e-myth looking at like the yeah. franchising model right yeah. so being able to build structures and formats that we we track our work that way so that other people People can come in and duplicate it so if we want to run a workshop we have a format and then we can take people and train them in that format and start doing it in other cities awesome. and not just looking at um, it's that whole thing of you know you aspire to work yourself out of a job yeah. um, that's what we well, that's kind of what we're trying to do is we're trying to um, have other people come in and be able to be part of our team like sure. Renee Brown she's got teams of people doing absolutely. her work right absolutely can't, if she can't do it all herself no. she's amazing but she you know yeah. there's only so much and amazing she can speak and spread the totally spread the word. So she's spreading yeah. the word and yeah. she's got the books and everything but she's got people on the ground helping and ex- and ex- expanding her reach and so that's a really amazing model to look to and she does that combination of in-person live events printed books um, all sorts of different opportunities so I think those types of models make the most sense because just to do one or the other I just don't think it works anymore yeah yeah I I totally agree because I do think you need you need that reach but you also need the Mm in-person and that's certainly something we don't want to ever take away um, from the model in terms of young people yeah. is like, you know, they, they don't just want to be online and certainly yeah. they spend more time online than previous generations, mm-hmm. uh, but they do, they really want to and they really yeah. need to connect in person totally. and, um, and it can be augmented by what they do mm-hmm. online, but that those two things need to work hand in hand. Yeah. So I totally agree. Yeah. We're, we're on the same page with that one. We are. Well, check. we could check, <laughs> check. Aaron and I are on the same page again. Um, so we could chat all day, clearly, yes, yeah. but we, we won't. We That's won't. We won't cool. do that to you. Um, so so uh, we are really happy to have used this lovely space at Club Quench. Yeah, and cool. right, aren't you glad you got to check yeah, this out? Yeah, I hadn't been here yet. Um, super so cool. if you get a chance, come on down and see Tessa and check out Club Quench mm-hmm. because um, it's worth it just for this wallpaper behind us. Because I, I saw I saw Marian Morrison commented earlier on the wallpaper. I love that couch. <laughs> <laughs> I got the eye on so the couch. Mine. Come and check that out, yeah. and certainly come and uh, if you have grade nine to twelve students, mm-hmm. come on down to Summit at the Bay, which is November eighteenth and nineteenth, and November seventeenth is our Village Bash where you can uh, come and be a part of the community as parents, teachers, educators, community members, sponsors, etc. And come and hang out and really find out what this whole Rethink Thinking business is all about. And, uh, and certainly you can check out Family Sparks. Tell yeah. us where we, can, where we can find your latest. FamilySparks.com. We're going to have a whole bunch of new courses and information on our upcoming workshop about kids and sex. Kids and what and to sex. do about all that business. So yeah, FamilySparks.com. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for Great. being here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thanks.